Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me out there? Can you hear the guitar? Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, Craig. It's a hot one down in Melbourne. Keep cool down there, all right? Thanks for joining, Craig. Jack, what's going on? M.A., what's up? Uh, James, what's happening? From Syracuse, where winter has arrived. There you go. Uh, Peter N., yes, good day. Back at you. And uh, yes, sad week with Jeff Beck, one of the greats. Uh, too soon. Very sad. Uh, I finally got to see him just in October. It was sort of a bucket list uh, concert because I'd never seen him. But uh, anybody who plays guitar knows that he is uh, one of the greats. Just unbelievable. So uh, very happy to have seen him before uh, he passed away, sadly. It's very sad. Um, Richard, my friend, I'm glad you made it. Keeping dry and keeping warm in LA. All right, JA, what's up? And uh, yeah, 179,000 subscribers here on Guitar Tricks, the channel that is the YouTube channel, not just this live stream. <laughs> we don't get those kind of numbers on this live stream, but we're trying, right? What's up in cloudy Vegas? Russ, what's going on? Danny, how are you? Jake99, what's up? Elias, good to see you. Glenn B, what's up? Central Pennsylvania, welcome. Jody1, what's up? Uh, Laura, yes, R.E.P., uh, Jeff Beck, and uh, man, trying to stay dry in California. It's just crazy. It's nuts. Uh, Stephen N.H., what's up? Uh, Fatih, welcome. Thank you. T.C., what's up? <laughs> like a fungus. He's in the house again. T.C., I love it. <laughs> uh, yes, Laura, uh, this one hits hard. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's too bad that we don't really have any, uh, we've got some yard birds on guitar tricks, but I actually think it's Clapton era yard birds, if I'm not mistaken. So we don't really have any Jeff Beck, I don't think on guitar tricks. So that's, that's really too bad. Uh, but of course the music lives on luckily. All right. Uh, Peter, what's up? Howdy back at you. Ray, what's going on? Uh, coping with the rain. I got gotcha. you. And a rainy and cold in Ireland. Dieselman74, what's up? Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Cats and dolls. Uh, in love with the Alvarez acoustic. Excellent. 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 Uh, Greensboro for um, Mallory. What's happening? Zane, what's going on? Aaron from Minnesota. Welcome. Uh, yeah, Robbie Bachman. Yeah, BTO, right? I'm Canadian. So Terry's like, uh, Robbie Bachman passed away. Uh, and I did not know that Robbie Knievel passed away. That's crazy. Of course, Lisa Marie, we all heard about. That's, yeah, just a sad week all around, right? Theodore, what's up? Uh, <laughs> Richard, <clears throat> excuse me. Too bad he ended his career playing with Johnny Depp. Well, he could play with whoever he wanted to, so there you go. I guess he was friends with Johnny Depp. It's kind of a strange pairing, but uh, he's going to do what he's going to do, right? He's a legend. <laughs> Jersey Red, my friend, you made it. Thank you for holding it down. Zane, what's going on? Jody One, Freeway Jam Forever. Yeah, when we saw him, uh, when I saw him here a couple months ago, that was the opening tune, just kicking right into it. <laughs> uh, Tom O, what's up? Yeah, sitting with your old national and digging the stream. Excellent. Thanks for joining. I appreciate that. And Alonzo, all right. Well, thanks so much for joining, everybody. Got a great turnout here. Yes, Jim Gregory. Here we go. You got it. Theodore, what's up? Excellent. So uh, uh, for those of you joining for the first time, we do this at the same time every Friday. I alternate between acoustic and electric every week. But uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, that don't get discouraged because a lot of the techniques and approaches can be transferred uh, between acoustic and electric, right? Um, this one in particular is a little more acoustic focused with the finger picking aspect, but uh, it's not to say that we don't finger pick on the electric, right? And uh, look at Jeff Beck, no pick whatsoever, right? <laughs> Robin, what's going on? Uh, Elias is asking, is Johnny Depp actually good at guitar? <laughs> uh, loaded question, right? Um, uh, from what I've seen, I haven't seen a lot of him playing, but he seems to hold it down, right? 
So, uh, look, I'm a big fan of anyone who can, you know, get on stage with a guitar um, or just grab a guitar and express themselves. OK, so, I mean, obviously, there are very there are various levels of mastery, but guitar is one of those instruments where um, you can go a long ways with a couple chords. Right. And a solid strum. OK, so there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So for those of you joining for the first time, uh, we have tabs that we go through each and every week. And uh, so if you expand the description below the video, you will see a link to tabs. There's a PDF. Uh, so go ahead and get those and follow along. Uh, will you? Uh, the tabs, I, I load up usually with some ideas, some musical examples, some wor some warm ups, some workouts, uh, hopefully some things that you can take into the weekend, into next week, uh, hopefully inspiring, hopefully get you playing a little bit more and just keep you moving along a little bit, right? That's uh, the point of it. And it should be fun. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, there you go, Ray. Easy to diss Johnny, but he's been playing since 12 years old. The guy can play, right? Like, there's different levels, okay? But I'm always a fan of somebody that grabs a guitar and can just express themselves, okay? So there you go. All right. Uh, so finger picking the focus tonight uh, on the PDFs, you will notice that on the uh, musical notes on the staff version of the tabs, uh, which are above the tabs, sorry, uh, that's where you're going to get the rhythms for this. And also, um, I've put a suggested uh, numbering of which fingers to use on which strings. OK, now take this with a grain of salt. There is no 100% uh, rule book on what you use for the fingers to play these exercises. They're just suggested. These this sort of the way that I think of doing it. But obviously we have a thumb and only four fingers, okay? And we've got six strings, so we're gonna be moving around a little bit, okay? So sometimes what you find is that you're just sort of anchored your thumb maybe on the lower three strings and you've got one or two or even three fingers up top. We'll try to work that pinky in there. I don't think we are working the pinky in any of these this week. I should have been a little better at doing that. But uh, obviously, anywhere where we can strengthen that is great. Unfortunately, tonight, I did not uh, be intentional enough about putting that in. But anyway, okay. Elias, not, not dissing, just asking a pro's opinion. Once again, my pro's opinion is this. If you pick up a guitar and you can play music and express yourself, it's always a great thing. So there you go. Uh, I love this. Tom O is rusty on the finger picking, so happy for this session. And Rust <laughs> Jersey Red chimes in, I'm, but I'm rusty. <laughs> I love it. Doug, what's up? Thanks for joining. Denver. Rob, love to stay, but it's Friday night. Can you move to another day? Unfortunately not. Uh, we've got Dave Celentano doing Wednesdays, okay? And uh, so you can catch him, but all these live streams live on the YouTube channel after the fact, so you can always check them out afterwards. All right, King 50, Northern Nevada, welcome. <laughs> okay, let's go with our warm-up, all right? Is this a D28? No, this is not a D28. It's sort of a stripped-down version of the D28. It's a lot more sort of basic in the or ornamental uh, sort of thing. And also, I think there's a big difference in the br the way the bracing is made to make it a little, uh, this is more of an inexpensive kind of instrument. So uh, I know some of you on there uh, are, ask me what, what model of Martin this is. And, and for the life of me, I could never remember which uh, um, model this is. It's some sort of Guitar Center exclusive sort of model. But uh, I did play a no a wide variety of acoustics one day at Guitar Center, and I fell in love with this one. I still love it. So uh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. Let's get to playing, all right? Let's get a G chord, open G chord, and we're just going to warm up the thumb and uh, first two fingers mostly, but also add in the ring finger as well. So um, <clears throat> what I recommend for this, is particularly if uh, you feel like uh, finger picking is not your strong suit and you're really working to kind of up the level a little bit. What you want to do <clears throat> is take, uh, not necessarily play this whole exercise all at the same time, but try to play each little chunk. Okay. And I've talked about this before. It, it, 
sometimes, you know, even just two bars of a riff might be a little too much to, to, you know, sort of bite off and chew at first. If you can just grab the little phrases and just work with them for a little bit and get used to it and then branch off and maybe add the next phrase, add the next phrase and then go from there. So uh, I'm going to play this exercise and then I'll, I'll sort of um, embellish on that a little bit. So it goes like this. time without a mistake okay so finger picking right we're gonna be nice and relaxed and uh, you know obviously sort of resting uh this part of our arm on the top of the guitar and you want to kind of angle it down somewhere near this part of the sound hole right and just be floating a little bit we talk a little bit sometimes people like to anchor on the pick guard with their pinky that's okay as long as you're able to do what you want to do. Yes, I'm in standard tuning. Uh, by the way, uh, Tom, this is not a D18, uh, D28, sorry. Uh, it's some sort of MVMM or something like that. Uh, man, it's really bad at model names sometimes <laughs> on the guitar, but there you go. Um, so, um, so uh, you know, nice and relaxed is the big one. You don't want to pluck and dig in too hard, but you don't want to be uh, too light somewhere in the middle, you know? And what I'm saying is, okay, what about if we just start with this G chord with the first three notes and, and loop that? Just to get used to thumb, index, middle, thumb, in. And go as slow as you need to go to feel like you're getting it, okay? Because if you're new to finger picking or if you haven't worked on it a lot, the fingers don't always do what you want them to do. So you have to program them, right? And the way to program them is just slow down. Lots of repetition. Just keep working it. Keep programming that. What you'll find is that the muscles start to loosen up. The muscles start to get trained a little bit. And you feel that resistance start to uh, go away with the repetition, okay? So now I'm going to add the next one, right? So I go low string, A string, D string, back to the low string, D string, G string. Maybe I'll loop that, right? Okay, nice. I'm trying to be as relaxed as possible here. Also, what you want to do is find a tempo where you can be consistently in time, right? All of that nice and consistent, even if you have to go... That's just totally fine, totally effective way to practice, right? Give this a couple minutes, right? And then you'll see in the final uh, phrase is a little bit longer. So I'm going to go low string, G string, B string, and then with my ring finger, high string, and then back down, B string, G string, and then ending off on the root with the thumb, okay? So... cats and dolls pick the low e string d string and uh that's on the last one uh in this exercise 1a okay um where low string and then it goes g string d string high string and then back down b string g string so you're kind of going up and down those four strings okay so one more time All right. <clears throat> Excellent. Next part of this is switching to a C chord and doing something similar, but we sort of can't have it as involved because we, we sort of run out of strings. So I do like a, an abridged version of this where we start on the A string. Okay. Same thing. Uh, a string, D string, G string, but now back to the root. And then again, G, B, high E back down. But I cut it off, uh, high string, B string, and then you can loop it because it ends up working out to uh, four sets of eighth notes, right? Uh, which are two notes, uh, two, pl pl two plucks per beat in the bar, right? So uh, one more time. Mm -hmm. 
Doug is asking uh, thumb low three fingers high three strings Travis style. Uh, you could do that if you wanted to, like you could kind of drag the thumb up to the D string. Uh, I'm not doing this specifically in this uh, exercise because I want to get all the fingers moving. But yes, you can totally do that. And just goes back to my original caveat on uh, suggested fingerings is that you can kind of make up your own exercises and do uh, whatever feels most natural to you, what feels most logical to you, okay? By no means is this written in stone at all. So you see, so you could move that up, right? You know, kind of drag that thumb on. That's sort of the what he's getting at the Travis picking style, where the thumb is kind of doing all the bass strings. So uh, not specifically in this exercise, but of course you could do it that way. All right, exercise one B. Uh, so let's get into a little bit of a. a pattern and start moving some chords. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to do the top four strings. Okay. So we're doing basically the upper four strings of what would be a full bar chord. Okay. So, and, uh, a specific picking pattern where we're going thumb index middle back to the, uh, index. And then we're going to go ring middle index middle. Okay. again, this is just a suggested uh, finger picking pattern that involves four, you know, your thumb and three fingers so that you can just get them going. Okay. <clears throat> but of course you can uh, move that thumb if you want to up to the G string even. All right. So uh, this pattern kind of comes, it weaves, it kind of goes up, back down, goes back up and comes back down. Right. Mm -hmm. very typical arpeggiation pattern. Like even if you were picking, um, that would be a pretty common uh, picking approach, picking pattern, right? Go slow if you have to and just stay on the one chord, okay? We've got some chord changes coming up, but I always recommend stay on the one chord and just get used to it first. <clears throat> Nice and relaxed, okay? Once you feel like you've got that rhythm going, okay, let's introduce a chord shape. Well, a chord change. Well, in the second bar, we're just moving the same shape up two frets, okay? So. And you can just stop there if you want, just work on those two. In the third bar, we're moving up another two frets, but this time to an A minor. So it's a different shape up top, barring down on the top three strings at the fifth fret, adding the seventh fret of the D. But it's the same plucking pattern. Okay. We stay on that for two bars, and you can just loop that, right? Pretty common chord progression, right? with me uh which uh which you guys out there guys and girls can uh can tell me this chord progression in roman numerals and sort of guess the key and tell me the roman numerals anybody want to give it a shot the right hand is the focus yes yes absolutely um it's all about the technique here right and then you just build the uh you build the uh, chord changes and shapes and all that sort of after. Well, you're building all of it, right? But yes, definitely the idea here with this boot camp is get this going, right? Let's see, Elias, key of C. Tian, what's up? Welcome. Sounds like the intro to Stairway to Heaven. A little bit. Yeah, maybe same key. One, four, five. Um, Rusty, good try. Not quite. Steve, you're very close. <clears throat> 
four, five, one. Uh, very close. Not quite. <laughs> one, three, five. Not quite. No. Six, seven, one. Yeah, Jim, you're very close. Um, to be clear. So the way I would think of this is the key of a minor. Um, and so that would make a minor, the one chord. Okay. And so now we're in a minor key and, uh, the, in a minor key, the chords are, uh, named a little bit differently. Okay. So, uh, Jim's the closest here. He's got six, seven, one, which is actually correct. But the way that you would write it is with a lowercase six. And then, uh, actually, no, that's not correct. You are hundred percent correct. I've got it reversed. So yes, capital, uh, V I capital V I I, and then a lowercase I that means major chord, major chord, minor chord. Okay. So when we have major chords, they're in caps, minor chords are in lowercase. We're talking about the Roman numerals. Okay. And in the, uh, <laughs> this is a common progression in a minor key to play. Uh, oh yeah. The, the other way that you could say this is the flat six, flat seven, uh, minor one or one minor. Okay. The technical way to say this is flat six major, flat seven major, one minor. Okay. So, uh, in a minor key, you've got, you know, just like in a major key in a minor key, you've got, uh, three major chords and three minor chords, but they're sort of shuffled a little bit differently, uh, between the major and the minor. See the majors got majors on the one, four and five, and the minors are on the two, three, six in a minor key. It's a little bit different. Okay. The minors are the one, four, five. Those are the minor chords. And the majors are the flat three, flat six, flat seven. So it's a little bit different. Okay. And by the way, for I don't expect you guys to know what I'm even talking about right now. So it's just for some of you that do have an inkling a little bit. Maybe this could be a little bit of a light bulb moment, but no worries at all if if uh, if it sounds like Greek, all right? <laughs> or it sounds like Roman. Um yeah, so there we go. Uh, I would think it's in the key of A minor. Elias, you were close. You guessed the key of C, which is the relative, but because there's no C chord in this progression, I'm going to go with A minor as sort of the key, right? Right on. Uh, Doug is, is saying the seventh would be the diminished. Yes, in a major key. In a minor key, the diminished is the two chord, okay? Just the way it works out. It sort of shifts a little bit, okay? All right. Excellent. Good stuff. Thanks for hanging with that. I digress now. We'll go back to, uh, oh, wow, we're on exercise two now. So I've got a little bit of a rhythm going on with this one. So the idea is that uh, we're going to play some uh, chord changes, but we're also going to shift up the rhythm because so far we, we've just basically done eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and really um, steady, right? So you can work on your timing and get the fingers moving. But uh, here we go. If I go to a C chord, and uh, here's a rhythm that might sound like. asking if I teach slide. Well, we'll have to bust it out here. We're going to do some electric next week. I will make a note and we'll, we'll uh, put a little bit of slide into some of the exercises next week. Okay. We'll do a slide primer a little bit on a few of the exercises. Okay. So a uh, good suggestion. We'll do that next week on the uh, electric. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, I do encourage, encourage you a little bit. Okay, so what we've got are some 16th notes and some 8th notes. Okay, so... Okay, so uh, a little bit... It's the same chords as Simple Man, but a little bit of a different finger-picking pattern. Uh, 
just introducing some longer notes and shorter notes, okay? So just on the C chord and then the second bar on the A minor chord, just a little bit of a different texture to it. Now I've got, in this case, I've actually locked sort of the, uh, the thumb on the A string, index on the D, middle finger on the G, and the ring finger on the B, okay? So... Now we go to a G over B, like kind of halfway through or right at the end there. Okay. It's for you. Keep with it. Keep with it. Go nice and slow and just work on every each little part. Okay. Um, so we've got the second fret of the A, open D, open G, third fret of the B. That's your uh, G over B or G slash B chord. It comes out of an open G chord, but you're only you're really only playing the A string and B string with uh, fretted notes, right? Okay, and then it's the same pattern on the A minor. So you're moving to A minor in the second bar. Okay. So uh, just wanted to change up the rhythm a little bit. And, uh, you know, you could get a go your uh, metronome going. And if you have one of those fancy metronomes on your iPhone or on your uh, smartphone, that does 16th notes. Um, you can, uh, thanks Doug. I appreciate that. You can set it for 16th notes and kind of work out where the beats are. Right. And, uh, I don't know if I, I've, you know, this is a very crude sort of way to show you guys, but, uh, if you can kind of see, let's see. Um, I know that's kind of hard to see, but this is the idea. I, you know, for me, I always, like to write a bar of 16th notes, right? So uh, you can see like sort of the first 16th notes and then the next three subdivisions. And I write those four times, right? So there's four chunks right there. And then I'll go through and I'll, I'll sort of tick off the rhythm of what uh, that pattern should be. And so I encourage you guys to do something like this. Like just take a piece of paper and write out, you know, 16 subdivisions. And look at the the uh, the music, the stems, and and you know, okay, that's a dotted quarter note, right? So that's going to be three sixteenth notes, and then I'm coming in with the next one, which is just one sixteenth note. So exit off, okay. So then right after that, there's going to be another. This time it's just a quarter note, so that's two sixteenth notes. So that's that duration, and then just keep going through it, and satisfy yourself that you can understand. Uh, what the rhythm is with, you know, an entire measure of 16th notes. And you, I always find that helpful. Once I see that, then I know where I'm going to be uh, plucking and where I'm going to be letting it ring out. Make sense? All right. Uh, fun little exercise here. Exercise three, uh, getting into some triplet eighth notes. So just groups of three. And, uh, you know, using some open strings, but playing a melody on one string, okay? And once again, I've got uh, my fingers locked on the string. So I've got my thumb on the G string this time, index on the B, and middle finger on the high string. And I'll just play through the first two bars here. It goes like this. <laughs> Also like kind of a lullaby thing when you have that group of three. Okay. So go nice and slow with it once again and just should be a pretty, uh, you know, simple sort of descending plucking pattern. Okay. So those are the next two bars. Now I'm just moving down string sets and playing a similar idea, but I'm staying on the, in the key of G. Okay. I started in the key of G up top. Now I'm going to just move string sets. So the thumbs on the D string. Now I've got the index on the G and the middle on the B. Okay. So
definitely has that vibe, right? A little rush, a little Queensryche. Totally has that vibe. <laughs> You're speaking my language a little bit, but uh, sounds pretty on its own. Kind of a lullaby kind of thing, right? <laughs> And then just to push it a little bit further, I go one more, you know, sort of the next page, go down to uh, now I've got the thumb on the A string, index on the D, middle on the G, and playing a similar thing. Ending off with the G chord, right? So if you put the whole thing together, it kind of makes a nice little piece of music where you're getting into a flow on a set of three strings, but then you're also changing those string sets throughout the exercise. So I think it's quite nice. That's the idea there. <laughs> okay, yes. I guess it sounded a little bit of rush, right? There you go, speaking my language. All right, that was exercise three, all right? Let's go to exercise four, um, a little sparser, uh, cool little riff. This is based on a song. It's not quite exactly what the, what the song is. It's actually picked, but it makes for a nice finger picking riff. Uh, this is an old Rolling Stone song um, called, why is the name escaping me right now? Back, Backstreet Girl. Okay. And it's actually in a different key. In that song, uh, it's down a whole step. The guitar is down a whole step. I'm just playing it in standard. And I'm simplifying the riff a little bit and adapting it for finger picking. But it's kind of cool. Some cool ideas here. And it's in 3-4 time. Okay. So uh, let's think about 3-4 time for a second. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three quarter notes per bar. So that... That feel is a lot different than the 4-4, four, four, okay? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's your standard 4-4, four, four, but when you go to 3-4, it has that sort of lilting feel to it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right? So what do we have here? We've got open A. And uh, what I do is I actually grab, if you look at the top two notes... Four on the high string, five on the B string. Um, you can actually grab the full D shape right here. For uh, This would be an E major triad right here. Even though we don't pick it, I like to grab it because it's implying an E chord. Okay, you're basically playing two notes of it. Okay, so I've got the thumb on the uh, A string. Middle finger on the top string, index finger on the B string. And I'm just moving that D triad shape, right, which is an E in this position, moving it down two frets, and now that becomes a D triad, right? It's out of D, you know, D major open chord two as well. So that's the first bar. All quarter notes, right? So all on the beat. One and, uh, sorry, one, two, three, one, two. Let not that all ring out. Pete Townsend style, yeah. Yeah, that kind of thing, right? All right, Doug's got a question here. I'm finding that mixing finger picking with strumming is a great way to go. When no one is singing, perhaps uh, finger picking, and when the other person is singing, to go to lighter strumming? Absolutely. Mixing and matching. <clears throat> 100%. Um, and even just dynamics, like you could do an entire song strumming, but, uh, you know, make it make sense with your dynamic, you know, someone singing, you bring down when, when, you know, when they're not singing, you kind of fill the space, dig in a little bit, right? Same thing with finger picking. Okay. Always think about the dynamics when you're doing this stuff. Okay. 
And of course, combining both of these, great way to go. So Doug, yes, absolutely, 100%. Okay, out of these shapes, I'm gonna go into an open A. So I'm actually gonna bar down at the second fret of the D, G, and B string, but you uh, you could if you wanted to. Uh, actually, you can't. I <laughs> Just given that our riff, we're gonna have a double stop on the second fret of the G and B where I'm gonna pluck that at the same time but hammer on to the third fret of the B and then back uh, back to the second fret, so. So those first four bars are gonna sound like this. And so we're halfway through the riff. riff. The second half sort of changes up the E to the D chord. Now we're not necessarily doing that over an A, <clears throat> you know, tying it to that A drone. We're coming up and we're playing off of power chord shapes. So the first one is going to be 799 nine on the A, D, and G string. And we're going to move that down to D, two frets down. Also, we're going to eighth notes here. So one and two and three. Also note the thumb coming down to the low string, but also the A string at the end of that. So I'm on bar 21 there in the exercises in the handout. So I'm getting that low E string in there. Then I'm going to move it down, but I'm going to fix the thumb on the A string. And then end off with the same riff on A. So I play that whole riff together, it's going to sound like this. Whoa. I play that whole riff together, it's going to sound like this. What's the thing we're introducing here? Three, four time, right? So that's a little bit different. Also, the double stop with some plucking, the first and second finger, right, together. And then a hammer on, third fret of the B string, which is nice. Okay. Even just that little riff, right? If you gotta take some time with it, go nice and slow with it, absolutely. With me, how we doing? We hanging on, hanging on. All right. Exercise five. Let's continue with some hammer-ons and pull-offs. In uh, you know, sort of adding that into our uh, finger picking a little bit. Okay. Uh, another song. So that one, I'm getting ready to film for Guitar Tricks in a couple weeks, and then there's another Stone song off Beggar's Banquet called uh, Factory Girl, which is a strummed uh, sort of, uh, you know, a picked and strummed riff uh, that this next exercise is based off, exercise five. Uh, very simplified though here. The whole idea here is to sort of come up with riffs, hammering on and pulling off, uh, off a chord shape. And so what you see in exercise 5A and 5B is ways to spice up just finger picking an open D chord. Okay. TC, look at that. Looked up the song. Well, I love the facts there. That's excellent. <laughs> cool. I like that. Yeah, some of these, uh, you know, guitar tricks, we've got a whole handful of these really early stone songs that I, I'm actually not very familiar with too much because, uh, uh, you know, my stone sort of era is mostly Beggar's Banquet through Exile on Main Street. Those are, that's sort of the era for me that spoke to me the most. Uh, but they had a lot of interesting stuff that they were, you know, kind of doing alongside the Beatles. Of course, there's the Beatles over here, but uh, Stones were over on the side trying to be as cool and uh, as uh, creative as the Beatles, right? Kind of following them a little bit, coming up with some cool stuff. So, uh, so this one, let me just play through uh, exercise 5A. 
Uh, and here we go. It's going to go like this. Uh, once again, I've got the, uh, the thumb on the D string index on the G string. And this time I'm actually floating uh, the middle finger on the B and the high E string. And before I play it, let's see here. Uh, love the stone stuff. Excellent, Jim. Audible, he Audible what's up? Uh, Paint of Black's a favorite. And Give Me Shelter, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. Love that stuff. And uh, both, both of which are on Guitar Tricks, I believe. Both I, I did both those tutorials, I think, a little while ago, but they're still up there. Uh, can't always get, can't always get what you want. That's also up there too. Uh, cats and dolls. Is that an electric acoustic? Yes. So this is a Martin that did not come with any electronics, but I actually, uh, got a set of magnetic pickups put in underneath the bridge. Uh, it's a pickup by the name of K and K it's a K and K acoustic guitar pickup system and, uh, it's passive. So it doesn't run on a battery. And so you just plug it in. It's great. And uh, I love it. I think it sounds pretty cool. So I'm running it actually through my Axe Effects, which I don't think you can see down there. Just buzzing away a little bit. Okay. And we've got it. Uh, so it's sort of bleeding through the mic a little bit, but I've also got a direct signal coming through to you. So Laura, Monkey Man. There you go. Now you're talking. Uh don't get me going. Love that tune. <laughs> uh, yes, Brian Jones, another terrible loss. Way, 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 way too soon. But he was the guy in all that, all that early Stone stuff that was playing all sorts of other instruments. It was really cool. You just get on anything to make some sounds. <laughs> uh, TC is asking, Mike, do you, own, do you own any pure stock guitars not modified in any way? Inquiring minds want to know. Um, I sort of have a problem with that a little bit, I admit. Um, so yeah, this is completely stock except for the uh, K&K system I had put in. You've seen my Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul, which uh, the only thing I did with that is switch out the plastics from cream to black. Okay. So yeah, not completely stock. Still have the other, the other stuff though. I didn't get rid of it. Uh, I've got my EVH, which is my other... Uh, sort of more expensive guitar and i did upgrade some of the floyd rose parts <laughs> so yeah i can't help it right i don't know this is it's kind of a sickness a little bit and then everything else is heavily modified parts these are all mostly parts casters back here super modified i just like that stuff i've always been that way so uh i try not to do it on the more expensive instruments but <laughs> it's a sickness anyway <laughs> <laughs> memo from turner jody one there you go that's a that's a blast that's a rare one cool hot rocks there you go <laughs> russ is asking do my kids have musical traits oh, a little bit they like music they're into the disney princess stuff right you can get them into some piano lessons just for uh some foundations and hopefully they'll uh we'll see We'll see. They have a little bit of an aptitude for it, but uh, it's hard to herd cattle. If you know what I mean. Those of you with children. Um, getting to uh, the riff. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. Okay, this is the first bar. Adds a lot, right? Instead of just. Okay, so that's the first two bars of exercise five, okay? Now it's a hammer on, so you're gonna index finger on the G, hammer on open to two. Notice how the thumb is sort of just keeping time on the open D string. So you've got this going. Okay. And then you're going to switch it to the hammer on on the B string going to the third fret of the B. And just open E, e string gives you the sus2 sound and then back to the D note.
quite like it. Okay. If you want to expand on that, you get into factory girl territory. If you know that, if you're familiar that familiar with that stone song. <laughs> That kind of idea. So it expands more to all three strings. And he's picking it too and kind of added some strums in and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, Keith wasn't one for super accuracy. It's all vibe, right? So there's gonna be some strings ringing out and all that kind of stuff. But uh, that's what made the Stones the Stones. There you go. <laughs> Uh, there you go. I like that too. Look at audible is working on his picking and just increase trying to inc increase his picking dexterity with this and love it. This is all a jumping down, uh, or a jumping off point for you to experiment and take these exercises and hopefully inspire whatever experimentation or what tailor it to whatever you feel you need. All right. Uh, exercise five B. So now we're going to, I'm just going to add some pull offs here, a little bit of a different, classic sound on the open D, right? But just adding that little pull off from the second fret to the open E string. Once again, now this time I'm locking the fingers to the D string, G string, B string, high E string. First, you know, thumb, index, middle ring. And so you're, the first one you're uh, pulling off from the major third to the sus two. Second one, we're pulling off from the sus four to the major third, okay? Cats and dolls, please do not be embarrassed to ask. These are all valid questions, okay? So hammer-ons and pull-offs. Sort of what they sound like. If you're new to this idea, you might want to just work on uh, pulling these out and just, you know, working on this kind of thing. So a, a hammer on is when, for an example, I'm going to strike the open G string. And then without picking, I'm just going to put my index finger down on the second fret of the G string. And I have to do it with enough force to get the note to ring out after I do it, right? Because I didn't have to pick it, okay? Now, if I don't do it with enough force, the note dies, right? So you hammer, you have to kind of give it a little bit of force, all right? And then once you sort of work on that uh, from an open string to a finger, you can do it with a fretted note to another finger, okay? That's a hammer on. You do it with any finger, one fret apart, two frets apart, three frets apart with the pinky. Okay. So start really slow with it. Okay. Try to get. Okay. And then pulling off is the opposite. So I start with a note, let's say on the second fret of the G. And I'm going to pull off the note, but I'm going to kind of pluck it. So the motion is to sort of pluck the string downwards so that the note below rings out. And again, you can do this with a fretted note to a note fretted below. You can do that. So an exercise to kind of work on this a little bit. And I encourage you on guitar tricks search for hammer-on pull-off and look for a tutorial on it because there'll be a lot more examples and a lot more video instruction on this, but something like this is a great exercise. You can do it anywhere on the neck. And then when you can com combine them, and then you can combine it in this context. That's the idea. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Excellent question. Please. No, there are no embarrassing in in questions here tonight. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Russ. Thank you, Doug. <clears throat> uh, exercise six. Uh, so, uh, going to work on some bar chords. Here's, here's an idea that, uh, we're, we're just going to work on some bar chords and, uh, let me play through this one and we'll talk about it. So, uh, let's see here. Oh, there we go. One more time, maybe a little bit slower. Here we go. Okay. Uh, do you need finger picks to play a chicken picking? Uh, Ritesh, good question. Uh, chicken picking, you don't need pick. You can kind of... You can do it with fingers, uh, but a lot of times, sort of the the main way people do it is with a pick and then with a pluck with a finger, right? That kind of thing, right? Where you got the pick on the low note, and then you get pluck on the higher note and kind of cut it off really quick and make it kind of squawk a little bit. That kind of idea, okay? Uh, once again, uh, maybe I'll throw some in next week on the guitar workout, on the electric. Okay. It's typically more of an electric technique, but of course you can do that kind of thing on the acoustic too, right? Doug's asking on the hammer on, you play a note and you bring another finger on another note within the scale to bring it into the note. A pull off would be when you take the finger and pull it off. Yes. So uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be in the key, right? Like you can kind of, you can always add notes that are outside the key. <laughs> it depends on what you want to do musically, right? Uh, but yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> Glenn, sometimes I play, sounds like chicken picking. There we go. <laughs> I like it. Uh, audible. If you want to increase the volume, finger picks are a great way to get louder, but not necessary. Absolutely. Yeah, you can do that. It's, it's a, it's a style all on its own, uh, but you can do it without it. Uh, Ritesh, how much music theory do you need to figure out records for any song? Uh, you don't necessarily need any, you do need a good ear and you need a little bit of experience. Okay. Cause there's plenty of guitar players that learned how to play and can hear things really well that don't necessarily know any theory but they can pick out stuff with their ear, okay? But that comes with a lot of playing and a lot of experience, okay? So what I find is if you learn a little bit of music theory along with learning how to all the basic skills to play guitar, um, it can kind of fast track you a little bit into being able to figure out chords. So yeah, I would say uh, just sort of a, a basic understanding of theory will help a lot, okay? All right. Uh, so I just want to break down exercise six a little bit, and then we'll get to exercise seven. Okay, TC. All right. Uh, just playing off an open A, and the one that's different here is that we're dragging the thumb now between the A and D string. So uh, I told you it was coming. So I've got the middle finger on the B string, index finger on the G, and the thumb is handling the low three strings. Okay. All right. Then we're going to the G over B. We saw the shape earlier. And then the, here's a C bar chord root five, meaning the roots on the third fret of the A string, but we're barring down on the fifth fret of the D, G, and B. That takes us right to the full G root six bar chord. So now the thumb comes down to the low string, but I'm still concentrating on plucking in the D, G, and B strings, okay? I've just moved the root note down. Same shape on F, same shape on E, and then back to A minor. Okay, one more time in that. All right.
right. <laughs> we got a little bit of Travis picking coming up in exercise eight. <clears throat> Uh, but let's talk about seven. Um, okay. That's the idea here. That's the sound of it. Kind of a little bit of a, a sort of a stripped down Ed Sheeran kind of approach a little bit, starting with an E minor. So if you wanted to, you can put your fingers on the second fret of the A and D string and make that full chord. That way, if you hit a wrong string, at least it won't sound wrong, right? Starting with the thumb on the low string, uh, middle finger on the high, coming down the B and G string, letting it ring. Now, muted strum. This is what I'm doing here. Kind of making a little bit of this, like almost a fist, but not really, right? Loose, kind of like this. And just getting on top of the strings. Okay. Then you got to come into open C chord. So now I've got the root, uh, the thumb on the A string, and I've got these three fingers plucking the full chord, D, G, and B strings along with the root. And then on the fourth beat. Look at where these beats happen. Um, second and fourth beat, sort of the back beat, that would be where the, where the snare drum would be hitting if there was a drum beat there, most likely. Okay. So we're cutting off the chords with a, what would be, it's, it's almost sort of like a strum, but really you just, the karate chop is coming down and you're smacking the strings with this part of your uh, hand, if you'd see that, right? Then I'm going to a D chord, okay? Open D. And arpeggiating down top string, G string, B string. Back to E minor. And just plucking the whole thing all at once. Thumb on the low, other fingers on the top three. Ah. That's the idea with that one. Okay, adding in a little bit of that groove. Uh, very sort of, you know, John Mayerish, Ed, Ed Sheeran kind of idea. Last riff, going to play it. Uh, let's see here. Ah, one more time. a Travis picking kind of idea with the thumb because uh, in almost all of these chords or the two chords in the middle, you're alternating the thumb and the thumb is always hitting on the main beat of the bar. So I'm going from A and then sliding that thumb up. Okay. So we're starting off with a pluck on the D uh, power chord. And then just alternating, right? From the thumb, G string, thumb, B string, thumb. Next bar, okay? Going to the second fret of the A, but still, you know, gotta use a different finger on the second fret of the G. Now I'm alternating the thumb between the second fret of the A and the open D string. 
now the G. It's the same pattern, except I've got a G in the bass, right? And then on that fourth bar. Okay? Plucking an A sus4 down to A major. All right? I think it's a cool one. Let's see. Can't seem to get much chop without an amp. Well, Glenn, uh, it'll come. You just, uh, it's the kind of thing where you can kind of practice this actually just, you know, set a metronome, set it, or just listen to any song and just try to do this along with the dr drum groove a little bit. Okay. Uh, the chop sound can be very expressive, right? You can be nice and light or you can really pronounce it and dig it. So just experiment with that, okay? You'll start to get a little more of a feel for it. Come down with all your fingers in a slight fist and just slap those strings. There you go. You'll get a beat plus the snare sound. I love it. Rusty, Jersey Red, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. How heavy is this guitar? It's light. It's an acoustic. It's a light guitar. Ritesh. Feels nice. <laughs> Danny, thanks, Mike. Great lesson. Want to get bigger at finger picking. Uh, taking the Yamaha in. Excellent. Uh, going to get lighter strings, 10s or 11s. Perfect. Sounds great. Good luck with that. Hopefully it makes a huge difference for you. And uh, keep at it, all right? Russ, thank you, sir. Theodore, thank you. <laughs> get those uh, acoustic calluses going, Laura. Love it. Peter, what's up? Uh, I've been using tabs for your past lessons as a practice routine, or should I be doing more? That's completely up to you. Like, uh, we have talked a little bit about putting, uh, it's going back a while, but uh, putting together a practice routine. Uh, these are great supplements to practice, uh, but uh, I always tell all my students, make sure you are learning songs. Keep learning songs. Keep learning songs. That's what informs all this stuff, is the stuff you encounter with songs. Keep trying to learn the music you like. Keep trying to learn songs, okay? All right, Glenn, Laura, King50, thank you. Jim Gregory, thank you. Zane, thanks so much. Alonzo, thank you. Glenn, thank you. Uh, what will the timing be when you come down on the slap, Doug? So, yeah, it, it works out that it's on the second and fourth. One, two, three, four. That kind of thing. It's on the two and four. Okay. James enjoyed it. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Rob, and I got blisters on my fingers. <laughs> Love it. Good, good, good. MA. Yes, you'll need calluses as well. There we go. Mark B. See you next week. Yes. Thanks so much, everybody. TC. <laughs> Excellent. Jody One, thank you. Uh, yeah, Jim got the light ones, the tens on acoustic, not going back. There you go. Right. We're all following the rev, right? Billy Gibbons has placed sevens on the electric. So why not go to tens on the acoustic? Uh, MA, thank you. Jay, thank you so much. Rusty, everybody take care of a great weekend. Have a great next week. We'll see you on the electric next week. Same time. All right. Take care, everybody. Cheers. See ya. See ya.